The Center for Translation Studies at the University of Texas at Dallas was founded in 1978 with the idea to revolutionize the whole study of translation in this country. I think we have achieved this by now by introducing various new ideas into the teaching of translation both on the graduate and the undergraduate level, especially through the form of translation workshops. To promote the awareness of translation and the problems of cross-cultural communication, Professor Schulte started the publication of the journal Translation Review in 1978, which is the only one of its kind to appear in the English-speaking world. The pages of Translation Review provide a forum for translators to discuss the creative process involved in the transplantation of literary texts from foreign languages into English. Rainer Schulte uh, and I have worked together um, for many years, uh, certainly since the mid-1960s, uh, Professor Schulte has been in the forefront of translation studies in the United States. Uh, the journal which he founded, Mundus Artium, was uh, groundbreaking in uh, its efforts to bring to American readers um, the wide diversity of literatures that uh, were being published around the world, and which up until that point were difficult, uh, if not impossible, to find in the United States through translation. The visibility of literary translation in the United States is further enhanced by the annual conference of the American Literary Translators Association, which moves to a different city each year. Prominent translators, editors, publishers, critics, and scholars from the United States and foreign countries participate in the yearly event. Thank you, Your Honor. It's a privilege for me, on behalf of all my colleagues at UTV, to welcome you to Texas, to the campus of the University of Texas at Dallas, and to the 20th annual of Alta. We are happy and honored that you're here with us. Francis, I remember that it made students very uncomfortable when I suggested we could forget words, wipe them off the page, and out of our consciousness, scrape them away to reach the living essence beneath them, and then let new fingernails grow. That was only a dream, of course, because we are a part of uh, but sometimes, let me tell you, uh, as a traveler in Latin America, uh, there is also a primal need to translate from one country to another. This is what Alfonso Reyes, the great Mexican writer, called uh, Juana Linguistica. The need is to go from one Latin American country, one Spanish speaking country, to the other, to uh, translate terms. Uh, my obligation was to make the joining of the direct quotation and the version written by Rios to use that awful word, to make that joining seamless, so that the reader would not be able to tell when the direct quotation from the original uh, left off and where Rios' own writing began. que es burlón y compadrito su hecho goza la ilusión de mi suburbio Hello, my name is Tom Huxema and I want to welcome you to our 30th anniversary conference of ALTA, the American Literary Translators Association. This is a very exciting time for all of us. This is our fourth visit to Dallas for a conference and we're here this weekend to celebrate the past of ALTA and to look forward to the many opportunities and challenges that lie before us as an organization. 
This 30th anniversary conference is really a milestone event for all of us. Uh, it's certainly a time to celebrate our collective achievements, but maybe more importantly, it's time for us to reimagine the role of translation and the translator in the whole world of arts and letters, and to reinvigorate our understanding of how translation plays a role, a very important role, in cross-cultural communication and understanding. Alta was the product of a vision by Reiner Schulte and Leslie Wilson in 1978. Together they recognized the need for a formal organization that would represent translators, advocate on their behalf, and bring them together in a community of shared interests. Over the past 30 years that vision has been refined in many ways that have benefited translators and enriched the field of literary translation. Uh, Reiner and Leslie Wilson started Alta together and I'm very happy to be at the very first meeting and become a charter member at that time. So from the beginning Alta was tremendously important to me as I think it's been for all translators. Uh, Reiner was the important person for my early translation life and also of course has been all that time for Alta as well so I'm very grateful to him for that. It's always difficult to start an organization like Alta because it relies on uh, a lot of volunteer help and a lot of institutional support. And uh, so the discussions went on for a couple of years and Reiner collaborated with, with his colleagues across the country talking about ideas for the organization. And uh, he and Leslie Wilson got together. Uh, Leslie was at University of Texas at Austin and uh, they put together a structure and uh, just organized a conference and started inviting people. And I think a lot of the structure of Alta evolved uh, from that first conference and uh, developed into the organization we recognize today. The first conference was exciting. Uh, I remember that uh, it was in 1978, in October, I believe. My first Alta was in Amherst, and I think that would maybe have been 1979, I'm not sure of the year of the conference. And I was living in New York, and I took the bus up to Amherst, and I'd just gone freelance if it was 1979. Um, I've been freelance since 1978. And met many of the people I'm still, I still know in Alta were at the Amherst conference. I've known them, um, so getting on towards, getting on towards 30 years at any rate. I love Alta and it's affectionate, a good organization. Uh, I would like to remember it 28 years ago, if I'm not wrong, at Amherst when I met Fitzgerald and the whole gang of people was there, were there, all the, the best known poets in the country who are always good translators. There was no exception almost in the last 50 years. Con este tango que es burlón y compadrito, yo he hecho dos alas la ilusión de mi suburbio. Con este tango nació el tango y como un grito salió del sordido barría buscando el cielo. Con juro extraño de un corrío le hecho cadencias que abrió camino sin vale y que su esperanza mezcla de rabia y de dolor. I am Rainer Schulte, Professor of Arts and Humanities, the Director of the Center for Translation Studies, the Editor of Translation Review, and I am also a person who studied in various countries of the world to learn various languages, various cultures, and how to behave from one culture into the other. From that point of view, I then transfer that idea, that practice, directly to the interpretation of international literature and that includes from Latin America, from the United States, and also from Europe. These texts are all presented to the students in translation, or mostly in translation, and therefore I have developed the art and craft of translation to be a guiding principle for the interpretation, the reading of texts. That is to say, texts that include verbal, visual, musical text. In connection with that, I have also then 
over the years developed from my training as a pianist the idea of how a text can be seen through the eyes of a musical score. What does the pianist translate from the score to the piano? My idea is that we need to change our attitude to look at the text, not what does it mean, but how does it come to mean? Because as soon as I say, how does it come to mean? Every one of us can develop his or her entrance into the text and come up with a different kind of interpretation. And that's what interests us, to see the text through your eyes, not only through my eyes, and it becomes a text that lives not only for you, but it also lives for me because I see your perspective that you bring to the text. Otherwise, the reading and the interpretation of text can easily, very easily die. And my idea is that the art and craft of translation, the paradigm of this, forces us continuously to establish associations, relationships, dialogue between one and the other, and that keeps us alive in the mind. And I hope that I can, because of my various methodologies that I have developed from the art and craft of translation, I can once again make the reading and the interpretations of texts exciting.